Hi! Recently, I've seen Captain America Civil War, and it's that damn amazing. It was worth the hype, and I wish I could have saw it like the day it opened, but friends were in town, and they wanted to hang out, and they didn't even see Captain America, the previous movie, so I had to see, like, Jungle Book. In all, all fairness, it's, it's not a bad movie. I liked it. I had fun, so. Friends over Captain America. Sorry, Cap. Before I begin, I want to talk about like the history of Captain America first. It will be like a tiny bit, so if you've ever seen the previous movies, you'll have like a little understanding of what I'm talking about. So, here I go. Captain America, aka Steve Rogers, was a soldier in the US Army during World War II. He had to go through an experiment to become a super soldier, and through that kind of experiment, he would become like super strong and probably super fast, and he would be able to throw a shield like at great distances. Throughout World War II, he would go out to fight Hydra, but Certain events would lead him to be frozen in time and waking up in present day America. That would lead to the Avengers and his team up with Iron Man, Thor, the Hulk, and Black Widow and Hawkeye. Like, nobody's favorite, like, Avenger, but well, what do I know? I'm not a Hawkeye fan. In present day time, Captain America would, like, side with S.H.I.E.L.D. and do missions of sorts, and he would later encounter the Winter Soldier, who turns out to be his old friend Buggy Barnes. Well, a brainwashed soldier for Hydra. Throughout the Winter Soldier, he would, like, try to save Bucky and, like, get him back to the good side, and. It sort of works in a way, but he still wants to be like like hidden away. So this would lead to like civil war, and this deals with a lot of like stuff happening in the movie. Another thing I I want to point out is that I've never read Civil War, so whatever my knowledge is based on this is just through internet or playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance too. So I don't know how how accurate I got like Civil War. So I'll just be judging the movie on its own so far, like what I've seen. That's it. All right. Let's get to like the premise of Captain America Civil War. The Avengers have saved the world plenty of times, but there would be some destruction along the way, and some people are not very happy with that. A bunch of government organizations want the Avengers to be accountable for their actions, so what do they do? They actually want them to work with them and like decide when they should be needed. Hmm. This is actually a decent kind of deal for a government. I mean, most government people are always portrayed as bad people or like idiots, but I have to say, Marvel's actually making, like, Marvel government, or, like, some sort of government, like, reasonable. Who knew? Seriously, who knew? While some Avengers like Iron Man will agree to this, other Avengers like Captain America won't, because, well, Captain America doesn't need, like, a, like, rules to, like, save people, and it feels like it violates his, like, his dedication to saving others without borders and stuff like that. Every Avenger decides to take sides on this issue. Some will work for the government and some like won't and retire and all that. And this will lead into like a civil war and obviously you'll see superheroes fighting. Duh. On one side you got Team Iron Man and they consist of War Machine, Black Widow, Black Panther, Division, and Spider-Man. I have to admit, this Spider-Man is freaking hilarious. On the other side you got Team Captain America and they have the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, Scarlet Witch. Ant-Man, and Hawkeye. Again, no one's favorite Avenger. Then again, he does have like a cool staff that like, that's like, like a bow and stuff. And, well, okay, I'll give him points for that. You think this fight's just a coincidence, right? But it's actually planned by Helmut Zemo, or I think he's called Baron Zemo, but if he pounces this round, then whatever. He's not that impressionable here, like villain anyway, so. And he's kind of like doing this thing because he wants to like ruin the Avengers' credibility and Huh. This is the one time a Marvel villain doesn't want to take over the world. Huh. Here's a good part of the movie. The action is freaking awesome, and with all the Avengers fighting one another, it's, like, very epic, and... Like, who would have guessed, like, certain Avengers would have, like, be better than one another, like, uh, well... Scarlet Witch, like, outlasting the Vision, or, uh... Hawkeye just using his, like, like, bow slash stuff against, like, other, like superheroes out there and also Spider-Man can take down the Winter Soldier. He just grabs his fist and is like he's like Yeah. You ain't that strong bro or okay he doesn't say that but still. Spider Man can just like grab the Winter Soldier's like middle arm and just be like oh, you bore me. I'll admit the narrative is fluid and they give reasons and like investment towards like why one team should fight and one team should also fight and I'll admit it's... Ugh. 
It's better than the reasons why Batman and Superman are fighting. Okay, I admit it, but still, I like that movie, so back off, okay? The interactions with the Avengers is either comes off as funny or dramatic, like uh, like the Winter Soldier and the Falcon not getting along because of like the previous movie because they were fighting, and sometimes they're a little supportive with like Steve Rogers when he like kisses Sharon Carter, aka Agent Thirteen, and it's just kind of funny like watching two guys be like, yeah, get some version Captain America. But the government being in this movie, I'll admit they're not total dicks, and, like portrayed in other movies like Transformers. You see, the government doesn't like that, like, they're like powerful people like that aren't with the government, but I gotta admit, they're at least trying to ne negotiate with like the Avengers and say, hey, we're for us and we'll help each other out. And even though they don't like the damage that they cause or like, or the damage associated around them, they're at least trying to compromise and like, try to like make the future better. Even if they, but however, they do come off as a bit of a dick. Especially Thunderbolt Ross, and for any Marvel like reader out there, he is a bit of a dick, especially to Bruce Banner. I am going to admit that Black Panther is awesome. His suit is really well defined, and I thought it'd just be like a, a simple black suit, but they put some decorations with like some African stuff, and they have like some like material that looks like it's like well like kind of scaly or something. And his like fighting style is badass, and he has like these claws and like put. Catwoman the shame. I'm like, if they're in a fight, like between one another, I would say, Black Panther, you win. I don't care. I know I'm supposed to support like my boy DC, but sorry Marvel, you got me there. I'm siding with you on this guy. So, but that's probably it. So, don't judge me. Lastly, I want to point out that I do like some certain scenes with Vision and Scarlet Witch, and looks like there's kind of like a hint of romance in there. Like, they're like talking and seeing like. Like, the vision is like seeing, like, there's beauty within the Scarlet Witch, and he's a big dork when he tries to, like, say, you're beautiful or some stuff like that. He's really bad at flirting, but then again, this is a dude who's been born for, like, like maybe, like, a half, half a couple months ago or something like that, and, well, it's a little awkward, but I hope they kind of expand this, because I heard there were a couple, and when I read Avengers vs. X-Men, they kind of, like, ha left on bad terms, so I was, like, wondering if... What kind of romance must be strong enough for to make the vision cry? So, there you go. Now that I've talked about the good, I want to talk about the bad of this movie. And I know Marvel isn't doing bad lately, but there's just some things that don't like sit with me as moviegoers. Like most Marvel movies, the villain is not that strong, or like he's not character-wise strong. Crossbones, I thought he would have been a good villain, like the tough enforcer guy who was like willing to take on the Avengers and piss them off. And Oh my god, they just, like, okay, spoiler in 5, 4, 3, 2, okay, spoiler here, I'm about to like, say a big spoiler here, or tiny spoiler, but Crossbones dies, and ugh, I thought there'd be more of him in future sequels, because, like, when it comes to, like, villains in, like, most superhero movies, the best ones aren't the ones that are most powerful, but the ones who last longer and are willing to, like, like, stay alive for so long, and are willing to be a pain in the, like, the hero's butts or something like that, and, as for the main villain, Zemo is, he's not v interesting, I mean, but I'll admit he sort of has a sympathetic story, like, during the events of Age of Ultron, his family died during, like, that big climactic fight with Ultron and, and his minions, and Zemo's, like, trying to destroy the Avengers' credibility, like, as a way for, like, to destroy, like, the Avengers and, like, avenge his family in his own twisted way, but, in a way, it is actually kind of sad because he has like a cell phone where like throughout the movie he thinks he's, he, the audience thinks that like, they're like they're hearing him like talk to his wife and kid and they're not they're just like voice recordings and they kind of sort of copy that in The Amazing Spider-Man where uh, like Peter still has like the voicemail of like Ben Parker before he dies and huh that was actually like I never saw that coming the death of like like Zemo's family, like they were dead to begin with, and it was actually sort of sad. I don't think I want to point out with Zemo is that there's a part where he's like willing to kill himself, like as he accomplishes his mission, because he did maybe break up some of the Avengers out here and there, and 
There's a point where, like he does try to kill himself, but Black Panther stops him to face justice for the crimes he did. But, in a strange way, Black Panther actually saw the rage in this dude, and, like, throughout the movie, Black Panther's been full of rage and was willing to do anything to avenge his family, and when he saw Zemo, he was like, wow, this is, this is such a sad person, and even though he should face justice, it feels like he's also sort of saving himself in his own way. Black Panther actually was willing to save this dude from, like, more despair and, like, not give in to his anger, because Black Panther's been through that anger, and he doesn't want to, like, make sure he doesn't go through that kind of issue. To say what you will, he's a hero who actually will save anyone. Here's our final verdict for the movie. It's actually the best, like, Captain America movie so far, and it's surpassing, like, the first two movies. Also, it's, like, blending a lot of heroes into the movies because, well, in, like, previous, like, sequels, there's only, like, like a few heroes, but now there's, like, a lot of heroes, and even for, like, a Captain America movie, like, they're mixing it up for now and then, and it's actually becoming more of a comic book movie. A real comic book movie, like, in comic books, like, superheroes will have their own storylines, like Batman, but there would also be, like, occasional superheroes, like the guest star in those movies, and Bravo Marvel. If you got time to see this movie, check it out, because it's worth a lot, and it's doing very well so far, and Bravo's doing something right, so go out and see that.